Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I'm Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Goodbye to the Sun by Jonathan Never. This is a book that came out in May 2021 from Shadow Spark Publishing. It's a sci-fi book. I received this book from the author in exchange for a fair review. As you might know, uh, Jonathan Never is the author of Stellar Instinct, which I love. So when he offered me his trilogy here, I was like, yes, for sure. <laughs> so this book is far different from his spy fi book, as it is a terse political sci fi. What is it about? I guess I didn't need to set it down. Uh, okay. Tucked away in the blue sands of coal, too, the moats are on the brink of cultural collapse. Razor, a bold and daring pilot, leads a last-ditch gambit against their local oppressors, the Targidians. The plan, abduct visiting ambassador Keen Drayden and use him as a bargaining chip to restore her people's independence in the Sagittarius arm. But when the operation unravels, Razor is forced to renegotiate terms with the arrogant diplomat. Battling furious wind tides in pursuit by an infamous bounty hunter, Razor and Keen find mutual assistance in the dubious freelancer with a knack for exposing cracks in people's pride. Light years away on Hirun, a radical resistance blossoms. The alluring rainforest planet haunts Keen. All of his problems stirred there during the patent war, but it's where Razor's troubles may find a solution. The moral tide ebbs, exposing an impossible choice that links their futures together more tragically than ever thought possible. A lot goes on in this book, and I'm going to try and say what I enjoyed about it without going to spoilers, as a great deal of what I liked happened in, like, the second half, <laughs> but I don't want to tell you all about that, because obviously you should read it to get to those parts. So basically, though, we have two perspectives in the novel. We have Razor and Keen, and both dislike one another from the outset. Yet, having to work together, they soon soften somewhat towards one another. But this is not a love story. This is not a found family or like a friendship-based book. It's more two people from disparate worlds coming together for a common cause. Or perhaps taking what help they can get. <laughs> they do have some fun exchanges and like, you know, their dialogue and how they kind of argue. <laughs> but the way they reveal their pasts and personalities to each other and the reader at the same time is very well done. I will say, though, it did take me a good third of the book to really care about Razor. I just found her initial chapters were sort of rehashing what we learned in the Keen chapters. So for a while, the deepest aspects of her personality weren't really formed. Like, you got that she was, you know, tough and had a chip on her shoulder and loved her sister and is pissed off. But we don't really learn the kind of intricacies of that situation until, like, later on. <laughs> The setting is very cool. The initial planet is interesting as it's beset by these massive windstorms. And the other is a tropical rainforest sort of place with interesting creatures and plants. There's a stark difference between the two planets regarding climate, yet they're similar, similar in political strife. And I thought that was a very interesting juxtaposition or kind of, a, kind of saying that, yeah, you know what, these problems exist everywhere. <laughs> One of the great things about the novel is the balance between action and overall political tension. We have a lot of fun action fights which occurred at intervals that made sense to keep the story exciting, but not too many that the plot felt thin, and a very complex but not complicated dialogue about monopolies, government, and colonialism. It's about inherited subjugation and cultural genocide, but also about what happens when you realize your people are just like our as persecuted as others in a completely different place. <laughs> it has a sort of futility to it that makes Razor's efforts all the more laudable. The story is based on Antigone by Sophocles, but you don't need to know that story to read this. I barely remembered the main gist of that play and I was fine. I read it back in like university and classical studies. So like, you know, good 16 or 17 years ago. <laughs> One thing that was a little odd to me was that people are constantly telling their pronouns to each other at the weirdest times. Like, when you're getting shot at, is that a good time to be like, I go by she, her? <laughs> I mean, I'm all about inclusivity, but I was like, maybe do that later. It wasn't an issue with the book. I just found it, like, kind of funny. <laughs> What wasn't funny was Nevera's writing, which is so elegantly crafted. His prose and stellar instinct is light and fun, but this is serious and also eloquent and deeply intelligent. If you like sci-fi that has something to say, strike up a dialogue with Goodbye to the Sun. You will not regret it. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you again to Jonathan for the review copy. I really appreciated that. I'll be reviewing the next one next month and then the last one in October. So look forward to that, I guess. <laughs> in the meantime, you can you can pick this one up. So thank you again. And yeah.